Buddhist philosophers have pondered a great length of many questions that will help us understand what our purpose is in life, what we, where we belong, what the meaning is to this whole thing. These two main questions that always seem to come up, seem to come up in history are, who am I and should I kill myself? Now these sound like very pessimistic questions, but hear me out, they're actually quite optimistic. See, we need to start off with finding a, establishing a dialogue, finding questions that we need to answer. And in order to begin a task, we need tools. I found three main tools, music, comedy, and philosophy, as the ways to explore the world around us. Now, the reason I chose these three is they're habitual in their nature, they're natural. No one teaches you how to laugh, no one teaches you how to tap your music, uh, tap your feet along to music, and no one teaches you how to ask questions. In fact, if anything, once you start growing up, they will teach you to stop asking questions, to not laugh at unnecessary situations, and to turn down the damn music. So let's begin by talking about music. In Greek mythology, there is an old story about a musician called Orpheus. Now, his wife was taken to the underworld, and she was kidnapped, and he has to go get her. Every other warrior that went to the underworld died. They take their sword, they go up and die. Now, Orpheus is a musician. So what he did is he took his instrument. Now, in the underworld, there is a beast called Cerberus, the three-headed dog. No one can get past him. Yet Orpheus managed to sing a song and, with the power of music, calm the beast down. See, today, how we view music, it's a way of expressing yourself in more than just words. That's why the scientist can never really compete with the musician, because he's not trying to convince you. He's trying to convey a feeling towards you. Music is the universal language that we all use. We sing songs for our dead, we sing songs for our countries, we sing songs for our mistakes, we sing songs for our lovers. So it's no wonder that it's naturally built into us, the language of song. Music has shaped the world that we have now. It's amassed more followers than all the religions put together. Music is a way of connecting people and tribes. Music is a way of saying what cannot be said. Now, a way to elaborate on how music has touched my life so deeply is if you look at the Middle East now, you see that music isn't really that valued. It isn't really much of a medium to look forward to. No one wants their son to grow up to be a musician or a singer. And yet, there's a universal language out there for us to tap into, for us to utilize, and help us understand what our purpose is in life. It, it, despite it being a simple one, it is one that travels a lot because you, music also explains life, as Alan Watts very beautifully puts it. Music is like life in the same way as it's not about getting to the end. If it was, then the best musicians would be the ones who play the fastest. The ones who would get to the end the fastest would be the greatest musicians. But it's not. It's more about the journey than the destination. Same as life. Sound waves go up and down, and so is life. Black and white, evil and good, and that's how the balance comes together in life. Music is the harmonious balance that's all around us, and a tool for us to utilize. The second tool is comedy. Now they say life is a tragedy to those who feel, and a comedy to those who think. It sounds a bit pessimistic, sounds a bit detached from emotions. However, again, it is an optimistic way of looking at life, because we're often taught that certain things you shouldn't laugh at them. Well, Comedy is not just a means to provoke people or get people angry. Comedy is, in its essence, the lens that we view reality to dim it down, to make it something not as serious, but rather something sincere. Here's a very important divide between taking something serious that has a harsh undertone than sincere, rather than someone shouting at you because they're sad, letting out tears is a sincere approach to go by. And so, the transparency that's created with comedy is truly and deeply undervalued today. If you laugh at something that you shouldn't, it's like you're making a mockery of it. Well, that is not the goal of it. Laughter is beautiful, especially at times of crisis. I was in Yemen during the Civil War, and we had to escape on a boat that normally carries 100 sheep. But it had to carry 200 people, amongst them were me and my little brother and my mother. And I didn't see them for the three days that we were on the ocean. And it was pitch blackness, we didn't have much food to eat, we were holding rust. Uh, it's, it, was, it was terrible. However, there was these little moments where we managed to squeeze out a laugh. 
where we managed to have someone smile. We'd even joke about what's currently happening, what's like we'd hear reports of other ships singing, sinking, and we'd, we'd laugh about it. We'd tell jokes and we'd move on. And from the silence of airstrikes, right after, it's silent. And then you hear, just from those gloom, dark clouds, through the cracks, a little bit of laughter can emerge. A little joke, even if for the present time you feel a little better, it's not always bad to laugh at a problem. See, what makes something funny? Let's consider that. A lot of elements. There's exaggeration, randomness, and there's the sound k, and that also sounds funny for some reason. So let me tell you how you can use these tools in your life. Let me give you an example with exaggeration. Let's say you come home and your roommate has a little bit of the floor in the bathroom wet. You could say, hey man, you left a little bit of wet, uh, the floor wet and now I stepped on it with my socks and I feel really uncomfortable. Or you could say, there's so much water in the bathroom I almost drowned. If your friend is five minutes late, you can be like, hey, you're five minutes late. Or you could say, you're three years late, we thought we'd never see you again. <laughs> see, when you blow it out of proportion, you exaggerate whatever the, whatever the serious subject is to such a degree that you cannot possibly take it serious. And it works the other way around. Because it shows you that if you can inflate it, you can deflate it. And you don't have to be a slave to the emotion that you have, because we have the lens of comedy to come in and save the day. In old courts, they always had a fool. A thousand years ago, every court had a fool. Now, the fool's job was to say something random. So normally, these people would have mental illnesses and not be quite as quick on their feet. The beauty of that is how we see when a child says something out of place, but it's really funny. Like you ask a child, what's your favorite country? And they say, pizza. <laughs> it's, it's funny because it's not supposed to be there, but it's beautiful because someone is attempting it. And the court fool's job was to remind the monarch or the king or whoever was presiding over that courtroom of their humanity. The same way poets and monks would keep a skull on their desk to remind them of their mortality to remind us that nothing is really worth taking that seriously. The third soul is philosophy. Now, philosophy in the Middle East is used as a derogatory term. If, you, if someone's talking too much, like I'm doing right now, they say, ah, he's philosophizing. Now, what are you doing? That is so far from the truth, because philosophy fundamentally, in its core, is the art of subjecting our impulses to a chain of conscious thought. So whenever you have a feeling to act on, you start thinking, why do I feel like that? And that is philosophy, that is very healthy for the individual. And for us to value it now is the wrong time to value it. Because what we're facing now is thinkers aren't being appreciated. People who have these ideas and thoughts that are told they're silly, you should just let them go. We're facing information inflation, which is what happens to a currency when you print too much of it and it loses its value. In the same way, it's really hard to reach out for a book when you have all the world's libraries in your pocket all the time. So now, more than ever, we need thinkers to emerge from society, to come up and not only gain the knowledge that the people before us have had and passed on, but add on to it. And that's how we build as a society. You can never say, well, I know everything, I'll start by myself, and also vice versa. You cannot say, well, I'll just use what everybody else taught me and we'll move on. That way society will never grow. We should all be prepared. Everyone in this room should be prepared to not just learn from the past, but also before we leave, because we don't have much time left, and I'm talking about death, this, it's not going to be worth it. You're going to look back and you're going to say, oh, did I change it? Did I just follow the rules and leave? You get, you get to toy with it, and that's beautiful. That's magnificent. It surprises us in the same way you can't tickle yourself because it's not surprising. Let me just put all of that into a little bundle for you guys. If you're feeling lost, you don't know what your purpose is, odds are you probably never will. And I probably never will either. But you get to try and find out, and that's the most beautiful part of being alive. You get to actually go out there and be like, hey, where do I fit? Okay, not here, not here, not here. And if you don't find it, you will try it. And that's beautiful. So. Let's go out there, sing your songs, you know, share your music with the world, for music, like poetry, is a way of saying what cannot be said. Go out there and spread the laughs, because life is too short to not, to take seriously, really. Always, always switch 
seriousness for sincerity. Always look at the intention behind the action. That's something we fall short of. And finally, always think. That's philosophy. Always ask why. Always have the curious child within you be, if not satisfied, at least stimulated. The fact that you, you're thinking why, how, when, that's beautiful. Power to you. And if you don't find an answer to that question, that's okay. We need more thinkers now than ever. As Plato said, one of the greatest philosophers in Greek times, the world will not be right until kings become philosophers or philosophers kings. Thank you.